Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we are going to have a quick look at Salient OS. Now, I did a live stream on this today and I was having some issues with it. And I did say, hey, I'm gonna off, off camera, I'm gonna look into what the issues are, why we're having these issues and what we can do to resolve them if, if possible. Now, understand that oftentimes when we're rolling through different distributions, if we can't get it to work right in a virtual box, eh, sometimes it's just worth passing. Um, but uh, when I decided to look into this, it was, uh, it was a very specific error that's actually fairly easy to fix. And so I'm gonna highlight that near the end of the video. But for those that are just looking at Salient OS and want some basic information, we're gonna start with a general quick review, and then I'm gonna tell you how I fixed the VirtualBox issue, which may or may not affect it if you're installing it on real hardware. So to start, you're not gonna find Salient OS on uh, DistroWatch, um, it is a, a brand new distribution actually put out, uh, I think it's uh, Silent Robot um, uh, did this, who is a, a, a great Linux guy, he uh, supports different channels and things, and uh, definitely uh, definitely a, a great user out there. And his friends actually encouraged him to put this out. So this is a project that he created for himself that his friends encouraged him to put it out. It is uh, a very new distribution, and so we're gonna have a look at it. So. Uh, they have just a basic SourceForge page, and if you do an internet search for it, you'll land on this link, and it goes right over to the download link. Be careful with this because the, he has two builds on this. One of these pre-builds for the NVIDIA cards. If you have an NVIDIA card, that's the one you want to install. If you don't have an NVIDIA card, you can load this up. It will install, but it might start with a blank blinking screen that you can't do anything on. So make sure you're grabbing the correct one. So if you land on this page, uh, that's not the one. I did that again before. All right, click over on the Files tab, and then you'll see in here uh, that he'll have different things. It looks like he is testing a Plasma. I'm not sure. Uh, but if you click into whatever the latest version is, you'll see there's two distros here. One of them is just the name. One of them is... Uh, with the NVIDIA. So if you're running video graphics, you want to grab the NVIDIA. If you're not running NVIDIA graphics, you want to grab this one. There is a README document. You're going to want to uh, flip through that. So before we dive into this, what is Salient OS? Well, this is a distribution that is for media, multimedia slash gaming based on a rolling Arch model. So it has basically Arch Linux with some extra tools and systems put in place for uh, for using uh, multimedia or gaming. They run the XFCE desktop, and I found it to be a very nice distribution overall, outside, of course, that, that little bit of the error that I had initially had. So what we're going to do is let's go ahead and jump on over to the distribution and see how it looks. So uh, here is our login screen. So we're gonna log in and by default, we are getting this uh, nice image of a stag as soon as it shows up, there we are. All right, so you can see that we have an XFCE that uh, we have a system panel at the top. We have a dock on the bottom and you can see by default, just on the dock, we have OBS, we have Steam, we have Lutris, GIMP, Blender. Two web browsers, Firefox and Chromium. We also have our desktop and our settings manager at the bottom, XFCE Terminal and Thunar. Uh, we do have Pumuk installed, so if you are used to something more like a like Synaptic or anything like this, you can go ahead and um, come in here and install things this direction, or of course just use um, uh, just use uh, Pac-Man in the terminal. So the, what is installed by default, we have a variety of tools that just gives us a very nice full feel to it. So we have a lot of uh, just different, uh, just different uh, accessories. For development, we have uh, you know Qt, we have CMake, just a few other items. Um, education, there's nothing installed by default. I did LibreOffice as a test and we'll get to that near the end. We have native and runtime Steam, we have Lutris, under our graphics, we have Blender, Darktable, GNU, uh, Image Manipulator Program, <laughs> GIMP, in other words. Um, we have Inkscape, uh, Nomax, Simple Scan. Again, I installed LibreOffice. Uh, under our internet, we have, uh, like I said, two web browsers. We also have Discord, FileZilla, Telegram, Transmission. And under Multimedia, we have Adore, Audacity, a variety of multimedia plugins. Here's Caden Live, Handbrake, 
uh, OBS, as we've already said. There, so there's a lot of system tools in here for these. Um, there is not, LibreOffice is not installed by default. Uh, like I said, I did that as a test. Of course, here's our settings and our system resources. So out of the box, it is a very lightweight system running just under half a gig of RAM on XFCE. Um, and so that is, a, um, that is a, a good benefit, super lightweight, which makes sense for a gaming and multimedia system where you want all of your resources to go towards your applications if you are running. Now, how does this compare to Ubuntu Studio, for example, which is another uh, very popular one? The advantage you're gonna have with this is you're always gonna have the latest kernels, you're always gonna have the latest versions of the software. Now, that may be an advantage, maybe a disadvantage. I don't like my software rolling, I just want the security updates, which is what you're gonna get with Ubuntu Studio. Now, the other major advantage that I saw is this is definitely created with somebody who has more of probably an emphasis on music production. Um, having our door and several other tools for multimedia or, or for audio. But with Ubuntu Studio, it's more generic in which you can pick which six sections you want. So if you are heavily involved in audio production but don't really do a lot in graphics, you can not even install the graphics plugins and just do everything a massive suite for audio. This doesn't give you those options, uh, but still it is a great system. The theming itself is just absolutely beautiful. Um, it kind of has a peppermint type feel, only with blues instead of your reds, uh, which is very cool. And, and I do like the theming options that they've done. By default, they're not using desktop icons, but if you just click down on the desktop system, first and foremost, just the number of really awesome wallpapers in here, and I really like this one. That is a cool wallpaper. Um, if you do need your icons, you come on down here and go down to File Launcher Icons. That's going to give you the ability to create uh, items in your right-click context menu. And then you can select what icons you have on your system just by toggling these on. So if that's uh, something you want, you can go ahead and do that. Um, overall, I think that this is a, a really cool distribution. So if you're looking for something that's more arch-based, you're looking for something that's more rolling, and you have an emphasis on games or multimedia, this is a very logical choice to do. So we're going to end the review part there. Now, if you caught the live stream, stream and you knew that I was having issues and it was like, is it the mirrors? Is it what's going on here? It turned out what the problem is, is that it, and this applies to VirtualBox, and I'm not sure if this would apply to, um, I'm not sure if this would apply to installing it on real hardware or not. I don't know because I didn't test. The problem is when I installed this, it creates your partition table, and I did the automatic partitioning. What it was doing is we have our boot partition, obviously, we have a root partition, which is basically your operating system portion, and we have our home partition. What was happening is the boot partition's just fine. The root partition, it was making extremely small. It was only making this 10 gigabytes, and that was entirely filled up when you install it. It was giving the rest of the disk the home partition. And so when you went in and when you first install this, the first thing you want to do is you want to go in and you want to run your mirror updates. So you go in and do sudo reflect, which is going to update your mirrors to the latest. What was happening is when you did that is it would get in there and it would completely fill up the disk. It would go in, it update the mirrors, and then when you try and run the update, it completely fills the disk and then the entire system would crash out. You couldn't install anything else and it was throwing all sorts of disk full errors, even though I had doubled the size of the hard disk. So that's the error that I came up with. So if you happen to install this and you're not able to install software, that's what the problem was. So the fix is, is uh, I actually booted it into Nopix, which has just a full massive suite of tools. And I used uh, Gpart. So I don't think Gpart is in this. Let's see if it is or not. Oh, Gpart it is in this, okay. So what you'd need to do is you need to boot into the system with, um, uh, boot into the system without this. So you can't do this when you are logged into this computer because you have to access all of the, all of the disks. So then what you needed to do is you need to come in here and you needed to edit the size of the volumes. 
So what I needed to do is just come in here and I needed to move the first one near the very end. You can't do this with disks because it does not allow you to move a partition to the end of the drive. So what I had to do is I had to decrease the size of my um, home partition, which is SDA3. Decrease the size and then using Gparted, I would have to adjust the free space following down to zero. That moved my unallocated space that I just created into the middle. And then I'd need to go into SDA2, which is my, um, uh, my root partition, and I need to increase the size. So doubling the size of that partition now enabled me to go in, run Reflect, run my mirror updates, and install software. So if you are installing this and you ran into that issue where you could not install something, that's what happens is the root partition is too small. You need to increase the size of the root partition. I gave it 20 gigs. Uh, so I have 20 gigs root and 20 gigs home partition. And now I have a working salient. So would I look into this further? Absolutely. I want to experiment with this a little bit more. So uh, those are my thoughts on salient. Um, that's actually how I fixed the problem that occurred. If you were watching the live stream, that's what we, we needed to do. It's just an issue of the root partition um, too small of too small of a space. It was filling itself up. So once he got that fixed, everything seems to be working great. And I look forward to experimenting with this a little bit more down the road. So let me know what you think about salient OS. Uh, is this something you want to start to use? Is this, uh, you know, something you're looking at, looking for, and, uh, definitely go have a look at, uh, at the distro. It's definitely worth having a look at. So let me know your thoughts in the comments down below.